everybody, welcome back to another Premier Business Academy video. By the way, go to premierbusinessacademy.co.nz for tons of free resources. This great question is a question that comes up all the time. What time of the day should we do our improvements or when should we set um, improvement time for our team? How do we get this off the ground? So I'm part of many lean group chats um, and most of them are kind of worldwide. So there's lots of people from all, all around the world and this is a question that comes up a lot. I wanna help you with that because it's really, really important and a lot of business owners and managers and leaders struggle with this concept and they want to get, they've read the book Two Second Lean, they want to get this off the ground, but it's like, you know, we, we, where do we do this? So I want you to consider a few things and I recommend that you grab a pen and, and write down some ideas as we go because you'll probably get some idea or pop into your head about what works for your business and your team. So you got to consider things like um, the type of work you're doing. So is it, is it factory work where the team are set by the, the, the pace of the machines, you know, set the cycle time? That's really, really important because if that's the case, that's gonna play a big part in answering this question. You gotta think about the environment, like is it in the office or is it um, factory? And often what we find dealing with businesses through Premier Business Academy, consulting with businesses is that, um, and in, inside our own business too, at um, Premier Group NZ, um, they're two very, very different environments in terms of um, when the work, you know, how the work is done, when the work is done, flexible time, all those sorts of things. So you gotta think about the environment, that's really, really important. Or are they people that are out in the field, um, you know, um, e.g. like a, a surveying company or a uh, lawn mowing company or a landscaper or, or a builder or whatever, you got people out in the field, how do we get them to participate in improvements every single day of the week? Because what's the goal, guys? What's the goal here, um, guys and girls? The goal is to um, you know improve the life of the customer. So you always gotta write this down. So it's, it's to improve the life I always say, um, you can say the life of your people and your customer, right? Because if you improve the life of your people, um, then the life of your customer gets better, or it should. If, it, if, if you're doing that and that's not happening, then there's a big problem with your culture. So um, if you can, the whole goal of lean, right, or two second lean as we, we talk about a lot here, or continuous improvement is to remove struggle, remove stress, remove hassle, add more value, um, you know, it's to eliminate as much waste as possible in every single process, right? It's the elimination of waste through continuous improvement or it's continuous improvement through the elimination of waste and the elimination of variation and overburden and these things. So, so if you haven't already learned about the three MUs, learn about them. And if you haven't already learned about the eight wastes, learn about them. We've got videos on all this stuff. Um, it's really, really important that you learn about these things because you'll never be able to get this off the ground if you're not training your people on how to see waste. Um, so you've got to teach about the three pillars of lean, obviously. Um, otherwise, again, you're never going to get this off the ground. So let's consider these things. Um, think about your 3S time. That's the, that's the time that we say sweep, sort, standardize because we've simplified, um, as per Paul's book, we simplify th uh, 5S down to 3S make it really, really simple for people because that's what Two Second Lean is all about. It's taking this big idea of lean and making it really simple and really achievable by every single person in your business. And you want them to be able to take these principles to home too. That's that's a very, very important part of this because if they do it at home, they're gonna be absolute lean legends at work because um, they're gonna have a better home life, right? Every day, life at home is gonna get better and better. Um, you gotta think about the length of time, how much time can you afford right now? And often when businesses are first starting out on this journey, they really uh, uh, can, some businesses can be very terrified about this because they say, well, we're already doing 60 hours, 70 hours a week, our team are burning out. How do we now say we've got to do 15 minutes a day of improvements? So my short answer to that one is, um, as soon as you stop and improve, the benefits flow on very, 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 very quickly. Um, and I give, this, I give the example a lot in our own business in 2017 when we first launched this principle of two second lean, we asked for two second improvements across the whole business. We got 12 hours of waste removed from processes in just the first week. So most businesses that feed back to me when they launch this get similar types of, of improvements. It's incredible. So that's my answer to you is that if you're burning out and you're freaking out that this is you can't possibly do this, my answer to you is you absolutely can and you're the person that needs to do it the most. Um, if you're in a business where you're burning out and you're running late on orders and, and everyone's in drama mode, there's stress and you're putting out fires, those are the people or those are the businesses that need this the most. 
because it's, it's all net gain. As soon as you stop to improve, the benefits just flow on and on and on. You gotta think about the maturity of your culture too. Like, um, you know, we've been on this um, two second lean journey for six, seven years now. And of course, um, you know, everybody's very familiar with the, you know, three MUs, the eight lean waste, the three pillars of lean, lead principles, um, the 14 premier principles that we've borrowed from from Toyota. Um, so of course we can give people a lot of flexibility around improvement time. In fact, in some of our departments, you know, they just do improvements all day long during their work. As soon as something's bugging them, they stop and fix it, you know. So that's not across the whole business, but in many, many parts of the business. So you gotta think about that as well. And you gotta th think about leadership. So apart from yourself, because obviously if you're not a lean maniac, then this is gonna fall over anyway. So you must be a lean maniac. I'm gonna put that in here. That means you're obsessed about continuous improvement and you're obsessed about growing people um, and you're obsessed about making the, you know, improving the lives of your people and your customers. So if you're not that person, um, this journey is, you're gonna really, really struggle with getting any of this off the ground. Um, so if you are not that person but you want to be that person, then, then keep listening um, and also watch the rest of our um, videos around this, our podcasts on the Premier Business Academy YouTube channel because this will give you a lot of ideas about how to become a great lean leader. So again, we get, we need a, I'm, I'm going around a bit on how to answer this, but I want to give you some good context and make sure you get good value out of this video. Um, so if you're not going to be involved as a leader, again, it's probably going to fall over. Um, but at the same time, you've got a lot of other responsibilities. But if you make the main thing the main thing, you got to write, you write that down because what is the main thing in your business? Um, the main thing, make the main thing the main thing. Um, and we can often lose sight of that. And let's say in your business right now, you're doing those crazy hours, everyone's burning out and there's drama and hassle and stress, well the main thing should be stopping for a few minutes at least every day um, to do the morning meeting, that's the first thing, so there's the, the most, one of the most important tips I can give you, make sure that's happening, um, because if you can't get that happening, you're never gonna make this happen. Um, so what is the main thing? The main thing, make the main thing the main thing, well that is improvement time, cleaning the joint up, cleaning, your, cleaning the mess up, cleaning the clutter out, um, removing everything that's unnecessary. So practicing 3S, sweep, sort, and standardize. Get rid of anything that's not needed in each workplace. Um, you know, Sorting it all out and making sure it's clean. Um, and then standardizing it by hanging it on the wall or putting it in, its, uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain spot where it's where it's easily accessible. So that's very, very simple. And that that often with most businesses where, where you start, that's where we started. We say, well, okay, our morning meeting is at, um, let's say, let's talk about our customer service team. Morning meeting at 8 a.m. Um, and then for the first couple of years, we tried doing improvements just straight after that. So we'd do morning meeting and then 15 minutes of 3S, sweep, sort, standardize. Everyone can go away and do that and then upload their improvement to the chat immediately. So that's part of that process, right? So that, that worked really, really well. As the mature, as it grew and people learned um, about it and, and then people started doing it, not just then, but during the day as well, then we started to realize that in that team, we could make it more flexible in the office team and say, well, um, now we've got into this, this routine and this habit, we can see the benefits of it, we can see where this is all going. Now let's make it a bit more flexible so people can actually stop and improve any time during the day um, because they understand that you know the customer still comes first, they've got to improve the life of the customer so they're not gonna do anything silly. So it comes back to maturity of culture is a big one. Um, so my next, here's a few tips I wanna run through. We've kind of covered a few already. You need to design a routine. So let's say um, 8 a.m. morning meeting, um, 8.15, 3S time through to 8.30, post your pictures on the chat, 8, 8.35 say, um, and then as a leader for the first few months you might want to do like a leadership walk or a Gemba walk, um, that's another important tip, Gemba walk, which means you get around and actually go and see the improvements for yourself as well, and you can actually have a one-on-one -on -one chat with each of your team, you say, oh, how can I find time to do that? But again, if you're making the main thing the main thing, um, it will it will start to, to matter, you know, to your people, um, and they'll see that you're placing a lot of importance on it, and they'll start to see the benefits of all this as well. But um, by doing that, you can see what's going on. So it's on your chat, your group chat, which is really important, and that's one of my tips here, is make sure you set up a group chat straight away. Again, this will all fall over if you don't have that group chat up and running. So start with 3S, that's really, really important. Um, and and I should explain to, let's say, some of our factories where everyone has to work to the drumbeat of the machine or the cycle time of the machine. So we do a mixture of this. So we do the morning meeting, um, 6 a.m., 
and then that'll go to 6.15 or 6.20, depending on how much training we're doing in that meeting that morning. And then straight after that, we'll either do a Kaizen event together, we call it like a mini Kaizen event, where everyone will get together for 15 to 30 minutes generally, and just focus on one problem together, brainstorm it all together, out in the factory, not in the, not in the office by the way, or not in the boardroom or in the meeting room even, you go out and decide on that problem, the biggest problem that's been bugging them from yesterday or the week before or whatever it is, and solve that problem together and then actually action the improvement all together. And you get someone to capture that on, on video as well, like before and after or before and after video, and even some action of the team making that improvement together. That's very culture building. You put that on your group chat. So we do a mixture of that. That's amazing. Um, just check my time here. Um, that's really amazing. And then um, we also do in the factories, um, at the end of the day, at the end of the shift, we then give people that flexible time of, say, 15 to 30 minutes to um, go and do um, their improvements as well. But we've got more and more coordinated over the years because at first it was like someone had fixed something or, or make what they thought was an improvement, hang a broom up somewhere. Next day someone else would come along and think, oh, well, the broom should be over here. So they'd shift the broom. So we end up just shuffling, you know, shuffling deck chairs around on the Titanic. <laughs> shuffling deck chairs, you know, the, the saying. Um, so we had to start, you know, coordinating that better. And that's where this lean leadership comes in. That's why you have to be involved because you need to steer the ship, steer people in the right direction, asking the, you're still leading with questions, not answers, but, you know, asking the right questions, probing them, saying, oh, are you sure this is an improvement? I noticed Jack put this up here yesterday. Um, now you're shifting it over here. Are you sure that's an improvement? Show me how that's an improvement. Are you saving footsteps? Are you saving struggle? Are you saving um, time? Are you saving you know wasted motion? Which which waste are you actually saving? So you start to challenge a bit more. But if you just try and do this hands off, you can end up in a you know a real mess. Um, so so start with three S. Um, try and set a time for it. Well, definitely set a time for it. So either straight after the morning meeting. Um, which is preferable because it's when everyone's fresh and energized and then they get fresh energy and impetus from doing that improvement, right? Because it inspires them to keep going and make more progress. Everyone loves seeing progress, right? So, um, or if, you, if you've, some for some reason, it's impossible at the start of the day, then you need to make a cutoff time at the end of the day, right? We stop work at four o'clock and we make 15, everyone has 15 minutes to, to work through the improvement list that we put up on the, you know, that we all agreed on together at the morning meeting. And every morning you can, you, you know, you can review that list and say, well, we made this improvement yesterday. What are we gonna work on today, either as a team in a little Kaizen event, or what are we gonna work on separately? Um, so everyone just chips away at a list. So you gotta be a bit structured with this. Like I know in the book, Two Second Lean, it teaches you to just fix what bugs you, right? But we've found that in a lot of businesses we coach, um, that can work for some businesses, but others, need to be a bit more structured than that because like I said, you can end up with people shuffling stuff around and not really, you know, you don't really make progress, you don't really strip out waste. So so I hope I'm answering this question for you um, in, a, in a kind of a roundabout way because it's not just a black and white question. Every business is different. So it's all about making it work for you and your team um, and your customers. You know, some people have customers that start picking goods up at 7 a.m. in the morning. Those goods have got to be ready. Um, and then you've got to figure out, well, if we if there's customers still coming in, you're going to need someone that's still driving the forklift to load those customers, but the rest of the team can get involved in improvements. So don't just throw your hands up and say, we can't do this, it's too hard. Hard, you've got to figure out a way and that's what lean is all about it's the hard thing that makes everything easy and if you just hold up your hands in horror and say no nah, it's too hard it's never going to work for our business then you're missing out in a huge huge way you're missing out on the real juice of life you're missing out on um, you're missing out on you know endless creativity from your people you're you're missing out on all this employee genius which is the eight lean waste you know because you've got your people just tied up doing wasteful activities, because you've got to think about this, is that 90% of everything we do is waste. You have a look at your processes, I challenge you to do that, and you'll find that 80 to 90% of everything you do is waste. Um, and if you're only just starting on your lean journey, it'll definitely be around that 90. It's just crazy. The only time you're adding value for the customer is when you're changing something, right? So like, let's say you run a sewing shop, um, getting off topic a little bit here, but this is all important stuff, and um, you know, you might be making a, let's say you're making a, I don't know, some pants or a dress or something. The only time that your people are adding value is either when they're cutting the material, you know, so shifting it around and getting it ready um, is nothing. And when they're sewing, they're adding value because something is changing. But all the other movements that happen to get that material on the table and cut it and then sew it and all those things, all that other stuff is waste. Everything, everything. The only time you're adding value is when you're changing something. So it's really, really important to understand that. So I'm just um, getting back to the point here to answer the, 
the question. Some people just say, oh, like, I'm just giving up. Like, you can't give up because you're missing out on, on, on the most amazing thing. So write it down. If you're really struggling, write down that lean is the hard thing that makes everything easy. Um, it's really important. And, um, and then figure out a time that works for your team. Or you might have to rotate it. You might have half the team doing improvements in the morning and half at night, uh, half in the afternoon. Or you might split it into three. Try and keep it as simple as you can, but making sure you can still serve your customers at the highest level. Because and then and then get your team to to um, to set and, and agree in your morning meeting. Because every day and and remember this is continuous improvement, right? So you're going to set a time. It's probably not going to be perfect. Well, it won't be perfect. And then every morning meeting, you keep asking for ideas from your team. Hey team, how do you think we could do it better? You know, can we spend 10 minutes in the morning or should we be doing it in the afternoon? When should we be doing it? Get your team involved to answer the question. You know, they they know best. They'll, they'll figure out with you when you should actually be making these improvements, okay? So it's really, really important. Get them involved. If you've got people out in the field, I understand that's really hard, but um, you might say to them, before you go out in your van for the day, if it's a builder or a landscape or whatever, you've got to make one improvement to your van before you go out. Um, one improvement. One improvement might be like, cleaning up a toolbox and setting a standard, or it might be creating a little shadow board um, and setting a standard, or whatever it might be, just something, or labeling your tools, for, or clearing out the clutter. Just celebrate all the little things, even just clearing out clutter. Well, that's an improvement, right? Getting rid of all the tools you don't need and um, bits and pieces you don't need and um, putting them in the, the red tag area or the, the holding pen um, for the, the area that, you know, before you either sell it or chuck it out, Get, you know, you just need to declutter, declutter, declutter. So there's a few ideas for you if they're in the field. And then in the field, you might say, well, out in the field, how do I make improvements? Well, that's important as well. If you've got people out there doing doing stuff, um, they'll be coming across things that bug them all the time. You say, well, you know, once you've got a real understanding of making improvements, then you can give them that flexibility out in the field to say, hey, I'm going to fix this. Or you might say, um, out in the field, they have to keep a little register either on their phone or like it might be a shared group chat group chat called Future Improvements, and they have to pop on there, this is really bugging me, um, I'm gonna improve this tomorrow morning before I leave in the van. So so they're committing, that. They're, they're, you know, they're not losing that, that idea, because you might say, well, I just can't get them to do improvements in the field because they don't have the right tools to make the improvement. Well, there's still no excuse, there's still no excuse. They need to write that down on the on your group chat, or, or somewhere in the van on a, on, a, on a board, whatever it might be, or a little whiteboard in the van, um, next morning, that's their improvement, right? So there's no excuses but you've got to work out what works best for you and your business. We're up to 17 minutes already, so this is way longer than I wanted to do, but hopefully that gives you some great ideas because I want you to succeed. I want you to push through because every single business in the world can do this. Um, don't make excuses, make changes. If you want to be successful and make money um, and ha have a great life and give your people a great life, uh, you have to make changes. You can't make excuses. You can't make both, all right? So have a great day. Thanks for watching. Go to premierbusinessacademy.co.nz for lots of free resources. Thank you so much.